All right, so for what you can use this software, this software, LT Composer. We are going to work today in LT Composer 3.3, which is the newest version, which was released like two weeks ago, I believe. So if you don't have it installed yet, please go to this link, download the folder uh, and install it. It's multi-platform, so you can use it either on Mac, like I am going to use today, and you can also use it on Windows. Uh, the workflow, the layout, all the functions are completely the same. There are just slight differences between Mac and Windows version and the only thing is keyboard shortcuts. But don't worry, uh, we are actually going to work with a lot of keyboard shortcuts today, uh, but I will be telling you what to do for Mac and for Windows too all the time. So you should not be worried about. Uh, what you can do with LT Composer is to create light sequences for different types of props. And it's, I think it's important to say that uh, you can sequence and program props and products from our company since 2016. So it's already four years on the market, this ability to um, sequence and program all the things. And if you want to check if your props are actually compatible with LT Composer, you have to find this little mark with FT or you can easily, if you have Boogang or Moonfan, there are, no, there are not these things. So either you should have this remote controller with FT on the back or maybe light toys on the back, but it should be, it should look like this. It should be here remote controller FT uh, on the bottom of the remote controller. Or maybe if you will switch on your props by holding a button, you should see this battery indication, uh, which will tell you how much battery do you have. Okay, I'm green, perfect. And if you see this, this blinking battery indication, that means that your props are perfectly synced and perfectly working and suitable for sequencing in LT Composer. If you are not sure, write us in the comments and guys can reply to you. Uh, I'm going to switch it off. Great. And yes, let's hit the workflow. So first of all, we are switching to my screen. Are we there? Amazing. So I'm going to minimize this. Oh, that's me, sorry. Yes. So uh, if you already download the resources folder, which I have here on my desktop, uh, just easily open the resources folder. You can find here the project, music for today's purposes, manual for LT Composer, and installation files for Mac or Windows. Uh, I already installed this version of LT Composer 3.3, so I'm going to launch it from my dock. Uh, you can launch it easily by double tapping or double clicking on uh, on the icon on your desktop, in your launchpad on Mac, or in your library of applications. And uh, this is usually what you see. Uh, this is the basic layout of LT Composer. You can see media library with some default images. You can see preview window, which is here. Then you can see this empty edit pane and empty track list with music timeline. Uh, also, we have here status bar. We have here toolbar with some zooming in, zooming out functions and also menu bar. Uh, all right. We would like to import our project. So let's go to the resource folder and we have different, we have actually different ways of how to do it. You can easily go file and open and you can find your project in the resource folder and just double click and it will automatically open in LT Composer or you can easily drag and drop the project somewhere in the LT Composer, it will load it directly as well. Cool. I will maximize it. And I will drag this pane a little bit up. Oh, actually it seems that I have imported it twice. So no worries, I will click File and New. I will create new project. And I will drag and drop the project again. Yes, now I have it only once. All right, so what do we see right now is the pre-done and pre-set of our project for two boogangs, actually four pieces of moon fan, and then like eight zebra poys. Uh, but before we are going to break down of how we created this sequence and we will make it like step by step, I would like, you, I would like to show you how this looks 
in the LT Composer and actually in the props together. All right, this was the project which we have created for you. You can download it, you can play it in your LT Composer. You should see the same thing which I see here. And we would like to know if you like the project, if you like how we did it, if you like the colors, if you like the music and the beats and actually the whole thing. So uh, feel free to write us in the comments or share your opinion at the end of this webinar. Uh, all right, back to my screen. So I would like to show you how we did this and how you can recreate this or actually improve it or do something like that by your own in as less time window as possible because speed and time it's very important and crucial when we are creating our shows when we are creating some showcases and projects and testing things on our rehearsals so that's actually what we believe is the most important thing to bring something which is easy to use and which you can do really, really fast. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm using this zoom in button in the toolbar or you can easily hold Alt, which is option on Mac and use arrows down or up. To be honest, I think it should be the same on the Mac, uh, on the Windows but I'm not really sure, I didn't test it, so sorry, this is a little bit like a flaw, but uh, you should be able to do the same. And the whole project will be zooming in whenever you have this cursor, which is like current time on the timeline. So you can click anywhere here on the timeline, you can actually click also uh, above the whole timeline, and when you are holding Alt or Option on Mac, uh, and using arrows up and arrows down, the whole project will be zoomed in and zoomed out according to the arrows you are currently using. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I just had, oh, sorry, I just went to the beginning. So here we have this part of the sequence, which is for Boogangs. Uh, we name it Boogang L, like Boogang left, and Boogang P, which should be Boogang R, because P is in Czech language. So we can easily double click on the name and change the name of the track. So I'm going to delete P and I'm going to write there R. So this is Boogang right and Boogang left. Uh, and we are going to use a regular track, which is only one side. Some of the Boogangs have ability to, to display different colors and different types of program on right and left side of each Boogang, but for today's purposes, we decided that we are going to use only the variant where the whole Boogang is shining in the same color at once. Um, all right, this actually, this possibility and this feature to display different color on one prop will be used uh, in a few minutes when I will be showing you what we did with our moon fans. So what do you see here? You see here some colors, you see these yellow things, which are markers, these yellow lines. You can see the music timeline here in the green, where we already have uploaded uh, our music. If you have some problems with loading the music, write us in the comments and our guys will help you. Sometimes there are some little glitches depending on your specific settings of operational system, but this can be easily solved uh, with just removing music and upload it again from the folder. It's very, very easy. You don't have to uh, be afraid about that. Uh, all right, so I will play a piece of this sequence, which is for Boogangs. And here in the left side of our preview window, you can see what are Boogangs. So you can see the visualization of what is happening on each Boogang. For this type of visualization, which is vertical, so you can 
you can actually click between different versions of visualization and you can find which one works the best for you. For today's purposes, I'm going to work with vertical, uh, which is the most accurate uh, vi visualization for FT devices. And it would be, it would be uh, quite important to say that today we are going to work only with colors. We are not going to work with images. We are not going to program any visual POIs. So if you are a visual POI owner, you can actually benefit from this workshop as well because all these things are applied also for visual POIs and you can upload this sequence to your visual POI as well. So don't worry. Uh, we are going to cover visual POI programming, sequencing, animations and other things in upcoming webinar which should happen on Monday, but I'll be talking about that later. Today we are going to do basic workflow with colors. So here in the media library, we are going to, uh, to switch to tap with colors, where you can see these six blocks. Uh, basically, we are working with solid, gradient, rainbow and flash in this project. And I will show you what to do with each of them. So. What we have here is gradient block, solid block, gradient block, solid block, another gradient. Here is flash and gradient. That's it. Just different colors, different settings. And actually, we can go. So first of all, I would like to hide these yellow markers. Uh, we can use a shortcut for that, which is H. It's the same for Mac and Windows. So if I'm going to hit H, all the markers are going to disappear. H as hide. That's how you can remember that. If you are going to hit H again, you will reverse that and you will see all the markers again. Also, if you are adding new markers and you can edit markers by hitting M on a keyboard, which is like marker, all the markers will appear. So if I will hide them, I will hit H and then I'm going to, I don't know, maybe play the sequence. Five, six, seven, eight, one. Great. So you can see that I add one more marker when I hit M on the keyboard. Here in the bottom left part of the screen, you can see all the shortcuts which I'm using. So this should be handy for you. Uh, maybe you don't understand or something, so this is actually very handy. So let's break down of how we did this sequence. Uh, for this purpose, I will create a new track and I will recreate the same thing which we did for the Boogang L. So I'm going to go here. I will click on new track and I can decide which specific device I would like to sequence. Uh, you can actually decide later and you can switch from each sequences uh, on each different of tracks later. So it actually not very, it's, it's not very important what you do right now, but we are going to work with standard FT track. So I'm creating a new one which will appear down here and I will just select this track by mouse and I'm going to click on it, hold it and I will drag it up because I would like to put it above our booking L. I will double click, I will rename it to test one maybe, I will hit enter and confirm the change of the name. All right, so what do you see here? We have here these flashes, which go from white to blue, which are also representing the beats in the music. This music is actually easy to read by its waveform in this graphic visualization in our music timeline. So it's actually easy to put these effects precisely on the beats. So what we have done, uh, we just grabbed gradient block. I'm clicking with my mouse and holding it and dragging. And when I'm going to the timeline, you can see different several things which are happening. You can see the white line, which is on the left edge of the gradient block, uh, which goes from up to the bottom, where you can see it also overflows the music timeline. And this is the indicator where we are going to place uh, this block. So if you want to place it perfectly on some specific beat, you can use this as a navigation. You can use this to help you to find the right beat and to speed up your work. Another thing which you can see is that we are highlighting all the tracks where we are currently with our mouse. And this means 
that we are going to put this uh, block to the specific to the specific track. So I would like to place it here in my test one. So I'm going here, and you can see that it snaps like a magnet to the beginning of the sequence. This is amazing feature, which is like crucial and which is like something I found very, very handy that all the things in LT Composer are snapping. So I just released the mouse and from this point I'm going to stretch the duration of the block. I can go either uh, to the left or to the right, but I want, would like to go to the right. And you can also see the white line uh, swapped and it's at the end of the block. So I can also see if I don't want to go over next beat. So this is where I would like to stop. And I already placed, just by clicking on my mouse, I placed the first gradient block. Uh, you may have noticed that this place in LT Composer, Edit Pane, uh, has changed. It changed because we are working and we have selected this uh, gradient block. So now we can see the settings of the specific gradient block which is selected. Right now, I would like to do the same, which is down here. So I would like to go from white to blue. So I'm going to click the beginning color or start color, and I'm going to find blue color on our color wheel. This color wheel uh, actually goes through all the colors on the visible spectrum. And you can see the triangle inside, which has its own specific purpose. Uh, when I'm here inside, I can move this circle and I can select a specific part of the triangle. When you would like to work with very vivid and bright colors, you should go directly to the to this edge, to this, uh, like, I don't know how to say, in this corner of the triangle, and then you can drag the circle on the color wheel. So you can see that the triangle is updated according to the position on the color wheel. But there are too many colors in my taste, uh, which we can scroll through and we as a humans, especially on LED props like Poise and Boogangs, we basically cannot distinguish between so many specific shades of each color. So if you want to work with more contrast colors and you can really see, you want to really see the differences between pink and pinkish purple or something, uh, you can press, you can press and hold shift and the color wheel when you are clicking with your mouse and right now I'm holding shift and when you are click on the color wheel all the colors will be simplified into the most basic colors so this is very very handy if you are actually in a rush and you would like to select colors which can be easily distinguished from each other so this gives you so many options which may not be visible this is perfect so you can go from pink to purple blue blue, bl bluish something, uh, cyan, aqua, green, yellow, orange, red. So right now I'm going to switch blue, but we would like to go to white. So on this triangle, I'm going to grab this inner circle in the triangle and I will slide on the edge to the white corner. So you can see we are adding white color to our original blue. Now we are in full blue. And you can also use this RGB code here as a reference. These colors are representing each channel of our RGB LEDs. So this is red, this is green, this is blue. 255, 255 is the maximum number which you can have on each channel. So right now you can see that we have full white, we have full colors. So this is also an indication. If you are going to slide, you can see that blue color is not changed because we are sliding to the full blue. If we are going to slide on the other edge to the to our black corner, we are actually dimming the brightness down. So we can see that the blue color is dimming, dimming, dimming to full black, which is blackout basically. So this is how you can actually very fastly work with different colors. Easily go to white, you can go to black or you can go to specific color. All right, so you want to select white. The ending color should be blue. And since we would like to have the same color like we had down here, we can either check the code, so we can see 00255 of the block which is below, 
or we can use this line of colors which is on the right from the color wheel and these colors are actually automatically updated every time you are clicking on something so these colors you can consider these colors as uh, latest used or recent recently used colors in your project so right now I'm going to click back on the gradient I'm going to click on my end color and I will click on this blue color because I know that it was used before perfect I can check the RGB code and yes we are here amazing then I have here this solid block uh, how to put this solid block it's a very easy you can just drag another solid block it will snap to the edge of the gradient which we created recently you can release your mouse and you can extend it but this is not very hand uh, actually this is not very effective way of how to do it uh, because you have to go back to the edit pane you have to select a specific color you have to find your specific color and it takes some time so how we can speed this up and this is very interesting uh, we have built this amazing thing which we called magic corners uh, into the color color blocks so when I have this gradient block and I'm going to the upper right edge with my mouse you can see this black rectangle or yeah this yeah this black rectangle which means that when I'm clicking with my mouse and dragging it to the right I'm actually picking the end color of the gradient and I'm extending that color into the new solid block so I don't need to drag and drop and then change the specific color and do all these unnecessary steps. I'm just easily using the latest color. So if I will change this end color, for example, to this purple, and I'm going again here, so you can see I'm working with the purple color. I'm deleting this, hitting backspace on my keyboard, and I'm going to put it back into blue. Uh, of course, our LT Composer has ability to go steps back, like undo. So we can go to the toolbar and we can hit undo, undo, undo. Or we can use it on our keyboard, uh, actually pressing Command Z or Control Z on Windows. So right now we are here. We are going to extend this blue block. And I would like to put another bluish gradient. But you can see that in our Colors Media Library block, there is this there is still this gradient which is from cyan to pink color and i do not i don't i don't want to recolor the block again so i would like to duplicate this block by pressing command d on mac or control d on windows so i'm going to hit command d and you can see that this uh, selected uh, block of gradient is now snapped to my mouse so whenever i'm moving with my mouse uh, this gradient is following my mouse basically and you can see again you can see pink line at the beginning which indicates the beginning of this block so it will help you to navigate through the music timeline on or through the other things on the timeline on the tracks you can also see the position of my mouse which is indicated by white line and you can also see the same pink, pink line at the end which indicates the exact end of this block of the duration of this block so i'm, I'm going to place it here and I will wait until it will snap perfectly in uh, my timeline, in my track of test one. Uh, be careful, because when you will have a lot of things on your timeline, you can have different blocks in a different lengths on different places. So if I will zoom in, I will click with my cursor here, I will zoom in using this zoom tool. If I will have this blue color somewhere here, and I will move with this block, you can see that it will snap also to this one. If you'll be zoomed out a lot, there can be situations like this that you don't see this little gap here and you think that you are perfectly snapped to the block before, but you're actually not. So every time I encourage you to go and check if you're, it's not like a mistake of the composer, it's not the mistake of the software, it's just how we designed that. So all the things are snapping to the left and right edge of each block. So you may check and be sure that you are perfectly snapped where you want to be. So I will put this back and there is no gap. Perfect. And then I would like to make this make the duration of this block a little bit shorter to do the same thing which we did down here. 
and now I will extend blue color again. So I'm using this uh, magic corner. I'm going here. I'm going to select this gradient. I am going to duplicate it again. So I hit Command D or Control D on Windows. I'm going to place it here. And now you can see we would like to recreate this. Uh, this is the same gradient like this one, but with different end and start color. Uh, so we can either take this and duplicate it, Command D, it's easy, but we would like to do the full breakdown. So I'm going to duplicate this color, uh, sorry, this gradient. I'm going to put it here. And then I'm going to use these little arrows, uh, which are basically swapping the start and end colors together. So if I will click on this, the blue color is now on the left, matching perfectly the end of the previous gradient, which is perfect for my purpose. And I'm going to click on white and I'm going, I'm going to drag this circle to black. And here we are. That's what we just created. Perfect. Uh, there's also another possibility, which is not very handy in this particular moment, but it can be very handy for your future projects uh, using magic corners. If I'm going to extend this blue color from the gradient, and then if I'm on, in a solid block, I'm going to the magic corner again, I am creating this gradient, which takes the color of the solid block and going fade out to black. So right now, visually, we created the same, but as you can see, we have created three separated blocks and it can be easily done with only two blocks. But this can be also very interesting and handy. Another thing with magic corners is that when you are going to work with solid block, which represents only one color, as you can see, the edit pane settings of the selected solid block shows only one color, which can be adjusted. Uh, and you are going to use magic corner. You can see the gradient to dark, but if you will use modificator for that, which is shift, if you will hold shift, it's same for windows and Mac, it will change to flash. So by clicking on shift, you are changing what you are going to do with the magic corner. So if I would like to extend blue flash here, I will hold shift and extend this block. And this leads us to the, to another uh, type of color block, which is flash. If I will click on flash, you can see that my edit pane has also changed in something else. Uh, this is settings for flash. Uh, flash is basically a combination between one color and black. You can actually change both these colors. So if you will click here, if you will click here on the circle of the start color of flash, you can change the color anytime you want. So we can go to green or we will simplify it by holding shift. So we will simplify our color wheel and we are going to hit full green, which is indicated here. And uh, then we can adjust the number of repeats or the period or the ratio. Ratio is represented in percentage and you can use this slider with this pink diamond. Uh, if you will drag it to the left or to the right, you can see that the green block is adjusted. The ratio, we, we usually don't use ratio, but it can be handy in many different occasions. Um, I just want to tell you what is it for. So usually we are using 50, so it means that the number at amount of green and black is equal. If you want to create something else like Morse code or something, it may be also nice to use this feature, but I'm going to go back so I can either slide when I will see 50 or I can manually input any number by using my keyboard. So I will just put there 50 and hit enter. This will update and it guides me to another thing, which is period. Period actually means speed of flashing, I can say. You can see also the equivalent of milliseconds in Hertz. Hertz is basically uh, information about how many, about amplitudes, about how many uh, like beats or things are happening. Usually you can know that hertz, uh, hertz are used for heartbeat or for electricity. Uh, I actually don't know what does it, how this can help me because I'm more used to use milliseconds. So for example, I know that nice flash on my props and this is great to test before you are working with this to find your perfect 
uh, speed of flashing for different music and different purposes. So I'm usually using 70. 70 is not so fast, but it's also not very slow. So I'm updating 70. And now you can see that also this block changed. And if you didn't see that this block changed like I just did, if I'm going to slide with period, you can see that it's changing. That's because you didn't switch on a real-time preview option. Real-time preview option is placed here on the right side of our toolbar. And this is something really, really interesting when you would like to work with music and when you would like to see exactly what you are doing. So please go here and check this little box. I will uncheck it. And if I will uncheck it, I'm in the default view. You can see that right now when I'm going to slide with my slider and I'm changing the period, nothing is changing. Actually, I will see the change of the color. So this is actually great, but I'm not going to see the amount of color and black on my block. Uh, all right, so I'm going to hit real time and real time actually shows you when you will have color and when you will have black. So if I'm going to slide, easily drag this cursor through the vertical visualization, you can see that now we are green, now we are dark, now we are green, now we are dark, green, dark. Perfect. If I play it, you can see this quick flash in our test one device. So you can see all the names of the devices on the timeline, also in the visualization. Uh, okay, great. I will delete that because we don't want it. And I will speed it up a little bit. So I'm going to duplicate this block. I will reverse the colors like I told you before. I will put it, the end color to dark. I'm going to duplicate this block here. I'm going to duplicate my gradient from here. I will put it here, duplicate this one, snap it perfectly here. And now I would like to put there the same thing from here. Cool. I'll check if I don't have a gap here and I can see that I have gap. Oh my God, I have to fix this little problem. Great, so since I fixed it, uh, I'm just checking all the questions which you have write, which you are writing on us. And uh, actually, you can find all the handy shortcuts in the help menu. So if you will go to help menu and you will click on keyboard shortcuts, you will see all the shortcuts for your operational system. Right now, I can see all the things uh, in combination with command, which is CMD, and you will see control C, T, R, L, maybe, I don't know, depends on your specific keyboard, and you can find all the handy shortcuts here. Perfect. Um, all right, here we have flash, so I'm going to drag and drop flash on my timeline, and as you can see, there is a different period. So I can either slide with the slider and check in the real time preview if I'm matching the flash which is down below, I will zoom in, or I can just check here, I see that I have period 70 milliseconds, so I can copy by using command C or control C on your Windows computer, and I will place it by command V or control V. Perfect. Now we have the same period. So the flash is completely the same. I will change the color to this greenish or aqua color, I can say. Cool. And yeah, now we can check what we have done. So I will select all these things. I will delete them. And I will play this sequence. So you can check here in our test one device. Oh, great. This is really, really perfect. Uh, I also like that I see all the beats here in the waveform, so I can always check because the cursor is also snapping to the beginning of the blocks if I'm correctly with the beats in the music. Sometimes you don't see these things clearly in your music timeline. Uh, that's why we are using markers. So if I will hit H on my keyboard, I will show all the markers. I will delete these markers by highlighting them. I will click on this marker, it will turn white. I will delete this marker. I will also click on this marker, I will click delete. And I will play this music and I will be 
during the playback of the whole music and sequence, I'm going to hit M several times when I will hear a specific beats. So I'm going to play it. One, two, 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 two. Perfect. I hit M quite a lot of times, actually. And uh, you can see that all my markers are generated exactly on the place where I hit M. As you can see, it was not very precise. This is actually a common thing because there is a slight delay between, between when my brain and my head hears the music, when I will decide to hit M on my keyboard with my finger and when the LT Composer will actually register that we hit something on the keyboard. So it's not perfectly precise, but we can easily adjust this by zooming in and just holding, clicking on the specific marker and we can adjust it somewhere on the music timeline. So you can see that, that here we can see some peaks in the music. So this should be the beginning of the beat. We will do this for all the blocks. And then we are basically ready to go. Perfect. When we have all the markers on a specific beats, we can put there some indicators. For example, at the beginning I can use gradient blocks, which will go from white to dark. I will duplicate holding, uh, pressing and holding Command D or Control D on Windows. And all these blocks will be snapped to your yellow markers. So you can actually snap all your markers like this. We will delete the sequence and we will play it. And you can check the visualization here. We are in vertical visualization in the preview window if all your blocks are perfectly with the music. I'm actually very happy with the outcome. If you are not happy with your outcome, uh, maybe when you are using different music, you can easily do it many times and slightly adjust. Oh, maybe this is better. So it's very important to test and try all these things because sometimes it's better to put it a little bit earlier in prior to the music because you have to keep in mind that somebody can uh, actually switch on the whole sequence on a remote controller a little bit later than uh, to the music. So it may, sometimes it's better to, to do it earlier or something, or maybe later. Depends on your specific situation. Uh, all right, let's move a little bit. One of the last things which I'm going to show you today is how to fastly do these sequence steps. And as you can see here, we have created these eight steps, which are perfectly synced with the music. And here the music timeline is not that clear like the part before. This part is a little bit more layered, so we can hear more voices, we can hear more uh, instruments, and it is not so clear. So how to achieve a big precision in shortest time possible. Uh, what we need to do, is to find the beginning, the first beat, which is quite easily visible here. So I'm going to hit M, I will add marker on this beat. And then I will play the music and I'm going, uh, what I'm seeking for is to find, uh, to count actually to eight. I believe you are familiar with counting to eight, like when you are preparing choreographies or you're making dancer, dancing choreographies or other things. So basically we are counting with eight or six depends on the tempo of the uh, of the music. Right now we have these four bar music, so we, we can actually count to eight. And uh, I will play it a little bit before our first beat. And I'm going to find another first beat. I mean, I'm going to, to count to eight and then next first beat will be my end point. So that's the place where I would like to stop the playback. We can easily start playback by clicking here or hitting spacebar. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. All right. 
As I told you before, these markers may not be so precise. So I'm going to check and I see there is this little peak which I believe indicates the real beat in the music. So I was maybe a little bit wrong. You can see that there is a little difference between what we have done before, uh, which is basically happening. So I'm not going to make a big deal about that. Uh, I'm going to place here a solid block, actually anywhere, and I'm going to play it again and I will check if I'm right. So I'm checking here. I think it is correct. Uh, so I will delete this block. Since we have the beginning and the ending marker of the whole period, I'm going to place there a huge solid block, which will represent the whole eight, the whole section in the music, which we want to divide into eight equally sized blocks, which will start one after each other, one by one. So I will click on this block and here are some little numbers. Uh, this number on this pink number on the left shows us the start time. So it's actually the position of the of the left edge of our block in the whole project. So if we are going to scroll with our cursor to the same place here, which is indicated here in this section. So this current time should be equal and should be the same like the beginning of this block. And you can see it matches. So it's perfect. There are no mistakes. And this number represents the duration of the block from here. So I know that this whole section between these yellow markers is three seconds and 191 milliseconds long. Uh, I would like to use only uh, milliseconds, so we can basically say that this is 3191 milliseconds long uh, block. What I just did is that I copied uh, the number and I'm going to use a regular calculator. Uh, for this purpose, I'm going to use built-in calculator in my Mac, but you can use your hand calculator or your table calculator or your mobile phone or you can go to Google and just type it there. I'm going to paste the amount which is 300, uh, sorry, 3191 and I'm going to divide this by 8 because we would like to see in this duration 8 equally sized blocks. So. The outcome is 398 milliseconds. I will round it up. So we will work with 399. All right. I'm going back and I'm going to change this to 399 and zero seconds. So this is the outcome which we have in the calculator. I will hit enter and the whole block was automatically updated. Right now, if I will delete this whole part, I can put this gradient, which was here before. You can see that I can snap to the end of our solid block here, which is the indicator of the duration per each of these eight blocks. And I will change it to go from white to pink. Great. Right now, I will easily hit Command D or Control D on Windows. I will duplicate and I will match the end of the first block to the beginning of the next one. Right now, I will duplicate it again. And since I would like to speed up my work, I'm going to select all these three blocks. I will hit Command D or Control D on Windows, and I am basically duplicating the whole sequence. So now I have six pieces. We have two more to go. Yes. And as you can see, the ending of the last block is perfectly matched to this yellow marker. Don't take me wrong, there can be a little bit, there can be some little mistakes because we were rounding, rounding up our number in our calculator. So there can be a slight difference. That's basically what happened here when we've been creating this sequence. Uh, but right now we are ready to go. We can check our outcome. I will delete this, sorry, but it will not distract us. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Wow.
I'm really, really happy with my outcome. So I don't need to do it one by one and checking all these things manually. I can easily use this calculation for that. I'm checking the questions and notes from our live chat and I see nothing, that's great. So I'm going to extend, oh sorry, no, no, sorry, sorry. I'm going to use hot corner. And as you can see right now, we are in A, B track. Moon fan, or moon fan is A, B available. So it means that we can program different or sequence different pieces of the moon fan, which is represented by the lighter and darker piece of the track. Uh, I would like to make our view a little bit bigger. So I'm going to hit V, simple V on our keyboard, like view, and we are going to expand all the tracks to see it better, actually. I'm going to hide my markers. I just hit H on my keyboard. And what I would like to do, what I'd like to do right now is to fill this empty space with the pink color. So I'm going to use our hot corner. I will extend it and snap it here. Cool. Right now I will just duplicate the same thing because the duration should be the same. When I have four pieces, I will vertically select all these three colors. I will duplicate. You can see that it's the same like what I just did and I will place it here. I see a little mistake here, so I'm going to check it. And yes, there are some flaws in the system. So I'm going to fill the gaps. Yes, I'm going to fix all the little things and we are ready to go. Since we have only a few minutes before our live stream time will finish and especially on Instagram, uh, the live stream, live stream will not be uh, actually saved if we are going through the, if we are going over one hour and we have actually only two minutes. So I'm just quickly going to show you how to recolor all these things together. Uh, you can select as many blocks as you want. And then in edit pane, you can see that you can change solid block. So you can actually change all the colors to blue at once. If you want to change all the gradients, you will select also all the things here and depends on the first block, which you have selected from left to right, uh, the edit pane will update. Right now we can see that we have settings for gradient. So all these gradients, which are selected, we can change them to blue color at once. Okay, guys, for the rest of the sequence, we have been using basically the same things and the same techniques. So you can play it, you can check it, you can see what we have been doing there. And I believe uh, I will come back in the next webinar and I'm going to break down a little bit more of this project. Uh, all right. So if the in, I just uh, I'm just checking the notes and uh, my guys are telling me that we are going to restart live stream on Instagram, so you should not be worried about. Uh, but anyway, um, basically all these things which I have been showing to you, those are the skills and tips and tricks which we wanted to give you in this first webinar, uh, which is which was like a very basic and simple work with some hints with some effective uh, tools and effective um, how to say effective techniques to improve your speed and improve your creativity in the LT composer. So I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to hit V again so we can see the whole sequence here. If you're on a laptop and not on this big screen like I am I'm having, uh, you may not see everything so you can easily scroll on the right. There are, there is this scroll bar and you can scroll like this. Or if you have mouse wheel, you will hit shift and you can scroll. If you don't hold shift, then you are basically doing nothing as I see, because I have Apple mouse. So it's actually different on various types of mouses, oh, of mice, sorry, of mice. This is the right word. Uh, okay, back to me.
I'm going to check my notes to be sure that I didn't forget anything. So we, we went through magic corners. Right now, you know how to extend specific colors from the blocks. So you don't need to drag and drop all the blocks from the media library. Uh, I told you how to duplicate things uh, with command D and command or control D on Windows. Uh, I showed you actually very quickly and briefly uh, recoloring of bigger parts of sequences at once. And we also went through a step sequencer of how to make these steps one by one using calculator. All these things, I believe, maybe some of these things actually, I believe, may be new for you. Uh, and I hope you actually learn something new today and you will be more comfortable about using software like this. Uh, especially because I know that a lot of you guys are not uh, coders, programmers or computer people. Uh, actually, you should not be these IT computer people if you are great uh, in your art, if you are great as a dancer, as an aerial acrobat, as a juggler or any other uh, artistic way or actor or singer or something like that. Uh, you should not be worried about computer stuff. That's actually our aim to, cre to create, that's actually our goal. Uh, with LT Composer to bring something easy to use, something which you should not be afraid, which you should like, which you should actually love, which should help you expressing your art, expressing your ideas, and uh, you should do it very quickly. You should not spend so much time sitting on the chair. You should do your exercise, you should build muscles, uh, you should uh, exercise and practice your new techniques, choreographies you should create. So I hope this webinar was um, somehow valuable for you. You found it something which is uh, new, which is great. Uh, please let me know in the comments uh, on Facebook, YouTube or Instagram. I'll be more than happy to receive your feedback. And as I'm not native speaker, some things were maybe mispronounced or my English was not very, very good. So I hope either way you enjoyed this. And I would like to invite you, actually, uh, on the next webinar, which will happen on Monday 10th of August. So it will be in five days. Uh, it will be in the same time, which is 8 p.m. Central European Summer Time, CEST. Uh, you will find all these details on the same website like you found today. We will be also promoting all these things on the social platforms, on the YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and on our website and hopefully on our new eShop, which we should release in a few days. So if you like our recent eShop, lighttoys.cz, uh, I hope you'll be surprised and positively surprised uh, with the new design, which we are working on for many, many weeks and months, actually. And uh, I was the designer, so I hope you will enjoy this. Uh, you can watch this video later. So if you missed this live stream or your friends missed that or you would like to go back and go through all the steps we were doing today, you can watch it on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. Hopefully, if you are not going to find these things, just write us please on academy at lighttoys.cz. Uh, you can also send and share our, uh, your project with us. Uh, so if you'd like, I'll be more than happy to see your creativity. You can use the same music, you can delete the whole stuff which we have here and you can create your own version of this project. You can work with your specific props which you have in your home. Maybe you don't have so many products like we are using here. Maybe you have actually more than this. I'll be more than happy to see your work, to see your approach, uh, to see your vision. So if you will, f if you will be actually open to this, please send us your projects to academy at lighttoys.cz. I'll be more than happy to see it. And if you will give us permission, I would like to show all the other people a little breakdown of your projects maybe and to react a little bit on your things uh, in another live video. And uh, last but not least, uh, we would like to receive your feedback. So since this was our first webinar, uh, I was quite nervous about that. 
uh, and uh, we try to prepare as great as possible. Our team uh, did amazing job. Actually, beside me and beside my three colleagues, there is another one. You don't see him right now. It's another Marek from Pyrotera. Uh, he is behind uh, the camera. He's behind the computer. So he's changing all the slides and things. So it's actually five people right now here just for you. And all of us, we would like to see and hear uh, your feedback. We prepared a very short and quick questionnaire and you can go to the link here. Is it here? Okay. To the link where you can check the questionnaire. It's actually five very basic, easy questions. We don't want to take so much time from you, uh, but we would like to improve this. We would like to make these webinars um, as great as possible. We would like to continue with this work. We would like to help you to become better programmers, better creators. Uh, we would like you to be better in the whole stuff and we would like you to give us some feedback and help us to improve our work here. Uh, this is actually everything from me today. Uh, I actually really enjoyed this session. I'm looking forward to see you next time or maybe see you somewhere else in person. And yeah, my name is Marek Solnička. I am creative director of Pyrotera. Usually I'm behind the camera, I'm behind all the projects and behind all the stage works and I'm creating the sequences for our shows. And this was my first day, my premiere uh, in front of the camera, teaching somebody of how to do these simple and basic stuff. So if you enjoyed that, I'm happy and see you next time. Bye bye, guys.